Ah yes, the jump scare. Such an easy, cheap way to scare the living daylights out of anyone. So easy, in fact, that modern cinema is addicted to them and they are everywhere, even in non-horror movies. But where did this all begin? And how did we get to where we are today? What are the origins of the jump scare? What was the first movie to have a jump scare? And what were some of the more significant and effective jump scares throughout the years? These are all questions that we will look into today in this video on the evolution of the jump scare. Okay, before we begin, we should probably just talk about what even is a jump scare. And I'll make this brief because most people know what a jump scare is, but what makes a good jump scare? There's three things that make up a good jump scare. There's the quiet anticipation building up phase. You know, the characters slowly walk into a closet that she heard a noise from or whatever. And then you have the second phase, which is the shock, the jump. And this is mostly dependent on sound, actually, more than visual. Like sometimes it's just like a little shadow and it's like, wow! So the sound is most of the uh, most of the jump, actually. Finally, you have the release where you're just like, oh my gosh. That's the last phase. Okay, let's go to the origins. We're gonna bring the timeline back to 1920 with the release of The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari. Now this film is pretty much the grandfather of all modern horror. If you haven't seen it, I highly recommend you watch it. When I first watched it, I was like, oh, this isn't gonna be effective. But it was actually really, really kind of eerie, kind of creepy, very effective, very good movie. You should check it out. Anyway, the film is about this evil doctor guy who uses a sleepwalker to commit murders for him. And just the atmosphere of the movie, like the set design is so iconic. It's got this eerie atmosphere. It kind of feels like you're in like a weird nightmare when you're watching it, but jump scares, all right. Does this movie really contain the first jump scare? Well, not technically. But there are a few scenes that can be a bit startling. Towards the beginning of the movie, the gentleman asks the sleepwalker, who apparently is also a fortune teller, how long will he live? When he asks this question, you're like, oh, what's he gonna say? And that's where the anticipation builds, because he's asking, how long will I live? And then all of a sudden, the sleepwalker states, till the break of dawn. And it's like, whoa. It's a, it's a little startling, especially for 1920, okay? I know that that might not be effective to us spoiled mainstream audience today, but back in the day, when you add a modern score or a modern rendition of what a score could be for this film, they add a lot of crazy booms and loud noises during that scene to kind of give it a little bit of a jumpy factor to it. And the sleepwalker just has a pretty creepy look to him. I mean, he looks scary by himself, so that's enough of a jump scare as well. And there's a few other jump scares throughout the film. There's one where he kind of creeps into the window and then you, you're not sure the anticipation's building again because he's kind of slowly moving towards her. And then with the help of a modern score, when he reaches to grab her, it's kind of a bit of a jump. A couple years later in 1922, Nosferatu was released, and this was a Dracula remake, an unofficial Dracula remake. Not a lot of jump scares, but there are some creepy scenes. I think when they, when he sees Nosferatu across the hallway, when he's looking out the door and he sees him over there, and then he closes the door and he goes and hides, all of a sudden the door opens and the anticipation builds, and the fact that he's not there right away, it's kind of a little bit of a a minor jump. So these were just kind of proto-beta jump scares. The last really early cinema jump scare I want to talk about comes from 1925 in The Phantom of the Opera. A lot of historians kind of claim this to be the first true jump scare. Well, before sound. And essentially what it is, it's when the Phantom of the Opera removes his mask, you know, the anticipation's building, and then he removes the mask, and then all of a sudden you see this really scary face. Apparently that was quite a bit of a jump back in the day. In fact, some people at the premiere actually passed out when they saw that. I know it's easy for us in the modern age to be like, bruh, that's not scary at all. But back in the day, you know, it's not like they had TVs and stuff. They literally, the scariest thing they had was scary books. We're moving on to phase two, the first modern jump scare. Now, one potential candidate for the very first jump scare ever has to go to Orson Welles with the classic film Citizen Kane in 1941. There's a particular scene where suddenly a cockatoo appears and makes a screeching noise. Take a look. Uh, I 
know what to handle. A lot of service? Mm, yeah. But I know what to handle him. Like the time his wife left him. <laughs> okay, yeah. Wasn't that horrifying? Now, here's a, here's a situation, all right? The reason why he put that in there was because he wanted to get the attention of viewers who might be dozing off or might have lost interest or whatever. It wasn't meant to scare people, it was to get their attention. Technically not a jump scare, but I mean, that sound. So let's go to the actual first 100% verified jump scare. The first truly modern jump scare took place in 1942 with the movie Cat People. This is a movie about cat people terrorizing society. The main character, Alice here, she's walking down a sidewalk and she feels like someone is following her and you hear these footsteps, you know, she hears some strange sounds and the anticipation is building and then it's really quiet and all of a sudden, the bus shows up and that, that the sound of the bus just jumps. Here, check it out. That was the first true jump scare. And it was also the first fake out jump scare, which means that the actual scare itself was not a real threat. A real jump scare would be like a cat person popped out of the bushes and attacked her. That'd be a real jump scare. Since it was just the bus, it was a fake out jump scare. The most cliche fake out jump scare is the classic cat trope jump scare. Next on the list is 1951's The Thing from Another World. Sounds like a window. 1.8, compass flex. 1.9, the needle's hit the top. These jump scares aren't super effective. Essentially, there's this monster, and sometimes when the monster pops up, the sound just goes crazy. And then in 1953, a few years later, House of Wax had four jump scares in it, so we have a film with multiple jump scares. One notable jump scare I want to point out is from the 1958 film Hideous Sun Demon. This really has all the jump scare tactics all put together in one. Check it out. And then in 1959, the film House on Haunted Hill came out, and this also featured a jump scare. It might not be the earliest jump scare, but it's the earliest to really freak me out personally. I mean, that thing looks like, whoa, that's, that's terrifying. And the way it moves off into the distance, one of the greatest for sure. But the next revolutionary jump scare would come in 1960 with the release of Psycho. Of course, we all know about this classic film by Alfred Hitchcock. Really, there's a few very good jump scares. There's the classic shower scene, and there's the staircase scene. It's got that shrieking violin, which is such a cliche now, but back in the day, very original. And it was really this film that started kicking off more and more jump scares in movies. Watching The Twilight Zone back in this day really had me spooked. There was some scenes, I think there was that nightmare at 20,000 feet where he opens up the, the window and that really freaked me out back in the day. In 1965, we had another first. We had the first mirror jump scare, which is a bit of a cliche, the classic medicine cabinet, open it up, and there's something in the reflection. It can all be traced back to 1965's Repulsion. Throughout the 60s, jump scares became more and more common, and they started to become a little bit more cliche. So filmmakers had to get a little more creative. And 1976's Carries was one of the first more creative jump scares. It works so well because it happens at the very end of the film when you least expect it. So you think the film is over, all the craziness is over, and it's like a nice cute little scene and she's bringing flowers over to this grave and then all of a sudden
Back in the day, that, <laughs> that really made me jump. A few years later, Friday the 13th does the exact same thing. She's just chilling on the boat. Everything's over. There's an ambulance and, you know, it's the end of the movie and all the the state workers are there to help out and you think everything is good and you're like, ah. Oh. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, Freddy just jumps out of the lake and grabs her and then she wakes up. So yet another very creative jumpy jump scare. One of the most iconic for sure. After Carrie and Friday the 13th, we enter the modern jump scare era. Around this point, the slasher genre becomes very, very popular. And of course, jump scares are littered throughout these slasher movies. Throughout the 80s, the jump scare cliche continues and they start to get a bad rep at this point, but we still have a few iconic jump scares. One of the most notable and perhaps most famous jump scares of all time comes in 1990 with The Exorcist 3. A lot of critics, a lot of horror fans claim that this is the greatest jump scare of all time. This jump scare actually builds up for a long time so the anticipation really grows and then when you just think it's a normal hallway scene all of a sudden you have this. The zoom in action the figure, like what the heck? We also have another very effective jump scare in Mulholland Drive. There's a great video on this on YouTube, link is in the description, but the build up, the anticipation, and then the, the face, oh my word. Pretty scary. One that <laughs> really got me as a kid was the birthday party scene in Signs. Holy cow, that made me jump so much back in the day. I also want to mention The Haunting of Hill House, which is a great Netflix series. One of my favorites. I highly recommend you watch this because there's many, many jump scares. And some jump scares are there before you even see them. Like, it's not even a jump scare. It's like a, you notice something in the background and it was startling. All right, we're moving on to the next phase, the internet. We gotta talk about screamers. Okay, so what is a screamer? A screamer is essentially a jump scare on a computer, usually through a game or a photo. This can be traced back to a piece of software called Nightmare that you could put on the Amiga in the 90s. Once you installed this software, a creepy skeleton would appear every five minutes to scare you. But perhaps the true origin of the screamer comes in at 2001 with the what's wrong with this photo screamer. This essentially just shows a nice dining room table and be like, hey, look, look really closely. What's wrong with this photo? And you kind of look around the photo and be like, oh, is something wrong with that photo? And then all of a sudden, boom. And this was such a great prank. This really started the prank revolution with screamers. I remember I watched this at in my basement and then we ran upstairs. So it was just continuously recycling down in the basement and my sisters and I were way too scared to go down to turn it off. And you could hear it like every 30 seconds, this scream, that was funny. The Screamer era really hit its stride with the release of 2004's The Maze Game. You're probably quite familiar with this game. It had an infamous uh, reputation, but essentially what happened was you'd be playing this maze game and you'd be really concentrating because on level three, you really you had this small little gap and you're so concentrated and all of a sudden, Another notable screamer from this time was from a car commercial in 2004 and it's just chilling in the valley and it's so soothing and then of course out of nowhere and with the release of YouTube there was a ton of these there was you know find the message secret message in this movie and there was a lot of them but they started to die down in 2012 however a new era would begin in the jump scare evolution and that was the youtuber let's play horror genre jump scares markiplier pewdiepie pewdiepie got big not because he played call of duty not because he played whatever it's because he played amnesia then of course you had five nights at freddy's which became a huge thing on youtube and why it's because of the jump scares people love jump scares what i see a lot of these days are gmod liminal space jump scares i see these on my tiktoks and on my uh, instagram reels but essentially it's people running around liminal spaces being chased by various scary creatures definitely very effective very creepy, even though Gary's Mod came out in 2004. So that's where we are today. What were your favorite jump scares? Which jump scares really got you 
back in the day. And that concludes our video on the evolution of jump scares. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe for more pop culture evolution videos. We currently have zero subscribers, so be sure to subscribe. We'll see you in the next one. You know what I'm talking about?